Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Heights. Let's go ahead and stand on our feet this morning as we worship. Sometimes you got to dance through the darkness. Worshiping with us this morning. If you'd have a seat for a second, go ahead and watch this this morning. Hey, good morning and welcome to the Heights. We're so glad that you're joining us this morning. We've got a couple of things coming up in the next few weeks. First off, Growth Track is next weekend. If you are new here, or are looking for ways to connect at the Heights, Growth Track is the place to start. It'll be right here on campus at 11 a.m. next Sunday. We'll take you through a two-step process where we'll learn everything about us, and then we'll take some time to teach you how God created you. So come join us next weekend, March 3rd. Also on March 3rd, we will be having a Guatemala interest meeting right after the second service. If you're interested in participating in one of our Guatemala mission trips, or you just want to hear about our partnership, come join us right here in the worship center on that Sunday. And finally, our camp fundraising season is in full swing, and we would like to invite you to our summer camp fundraising banquet on March 16th. Come join us for an evening of fun, laughs, and a whole lot of good food. Tickets can be purchased from one of our campers or on our events page at theheightschurch.net or our app. Thanks again for joining us this morning. Now let's get back to the service.
Would you go ahead and stay on your feet this morning? We're going to keep worshiping like we're not done. We've got a big God, and we're going to make much of him this morning. We'll give him our best because he's worthy of it. Holy, that's who you are. Angels and earth sing a song for your honor. Because power belongs to you. grow tired of telling you you're worthy there's so many ways i could sing of your glory no i will never get tired of telling you you're worthy over and over again always now and forever you're matchless clothed in the color As we bow before you, there's no 
up, church. Give up to Jesus. Today. Come on. It's just a beautiful picture, a lot of metaphors of just, I need more of God. Anybody in this room need more of God? Yeah. I want the Holy Spirit to move in my life. It's, it's not some voodoo thing. It is the presence of God to move in my life where I know more of the creator of the universe that I realize that he could be just as close as the person who is sitting next to me, if not closer. That I have someone that is with me, that somebody will move in my life, that will have power in my life, comfort in my life, joy in my life, peace in my life, hope in my life, love in my life, and it is all God. Anybody grateful for that today? Yeah, come on, give it up for the Lord, yeah. And so as we sing this song, that's what we're asking. I want more of, I want more of God. I want the Spirit of God to move in me today. I want more of Him. I don't want religion. I want a relationship with the living God. And that's what we're asking for today. And so I invite you right now, if you would, just wherever, wherever you're at in your life, just commit yourself today. God, I want more of you. If you would, bow your heads with me. Let's pray. Spirit of God, we, we need you. We want more of you. Holy Spirit, I ask that you would move in this place in each and every person. Take them to new places. Show them new things about you, about them, about what you want for them and from them. But Lord, most of all, we just, as we come together as a church family, we just want to know that we've been in the presence of a most high God. And so Lord, we want to experience more of you today. You're a God to be known, and you're a God that's to be experienced. That you're more than just a God in a book, which is a great book, but you're a God that's to be experienced right now, right in this moment. And so, Lord, we come before you today, worshiping you, wanting to hear more of your truth from your word, but we want to experience you. Lord, we love you. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Everybody said together, amen, amen. You may be seated. Well, we're so glad that you're here. My name is Matt. I'm the pastor here at the Heights. And we're just so glad uh, that you're here. Hey, in fact, hey, would you do me a favor and tell the person next to you, hey, you're looking mighty fine today. Yeah. Now, you always have a second choice. So go to your second choice. The other person say, uh, you need a little help. You need some coffee today. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, we want to welcome those of you who are joining online. Uh, we'd love to have you in the room, but thank you so much for, for joining us online. And whether you're watching live or during the week, but we're so glad that you're here. And if you're a guest with us today, if this is your first time here, we're so glad that you are here with us today. I love to tell people we are a real church. We're not a perfect church. Um, we're real people. They're dealing with real issues, looking for real answers. Amen? And uh, so we're so glad that you're here with us today. In fact, church family, would you give it up for all of the people joining us online, our guests that are here today? Come on. Yeah. We are glad uh, that you are here with us um, when you came in, you should be handed a worship guide. There's all kinds of information there. In my message notes, get those out. Um, there's a connect card. Uh, if you have a prayer request or a need, we'd love to hear uh, from you about that. And we just ask everyone to fill those out. And then at the end of the service today, we'll have some buckets there by the door. And uh, you can put those in there as you leave. Uh, if you're visiting with us, I just want to send you a note saying thank you for being here with us uh, today. Uh, earlier you saw uh, in the video, in the announcement video, that we're going to camp. We have a fundraiser coming up. And I, I kind of need to give you, uh, if you want to call it spiel or whatever, a plea to parents that have kids that are age appropriate to go to camp. If you have kids that are third grade through teenagers, I need you to hear me. You need to get your kids on the bus. 
And here's why. When you get your kids away from life, their normal stuff, and all the social media, and all that stuff, it's just funny how God seems to work. <laughs> that you just look at our kids, and even the life of my kids, life transformation happens when kids go to camp and get away from it all. And I want to encourage you to get your kids on uh, the bus. Now, if you're worried about money, yeah, camp, it, 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 it could be a little bit expensive. I, I need you to know this. I'm dating myself here. Uh, in the 28 years I have been in ministry, I know, I'm dating myself. I look pretty young, don't I? Yeah, no, no. <laughs> you have to say that, Vicki. Yeah. <laughs> no. Um, uh, in my 28 years of ministry, I have never had a kid who wanted to go to camp and would take the journey with us, not go to camp because of money. Never. If your kid wants to go, take the journey with us. I want your, even if their kid doesn't want to go, get them, make them go. All right? All right? Uh, get them on the bus. It will change their life. Okay? And we will help you. I promise you. I have, I, I'm batting a thousand on this, okay? So get them on the bus. Does that sound good, everybody? Okay. Um, and so uh, if you need more information, come see me at one of our, our staff information center. We'd be glad to help you. We want to help your kids grow and know Jesus, the Jesus that loves them so much. Okay. End of spiel. Okay, here we go. Uh, today we're finishing our series uh, that we're calling The Relationship Game. And uh, we've, it's been a great journey. I hope that you've liked it. If you've, you've been learning from it. Uh, I've been getting a lot of emails, a lot of just positive things, and, and even just struggles also, too, that you're going through. And, and we're glad that we, God is so practical. Uh, Jesus uh, knows where you're at and wants to help you take next steps in your journey. And so what we've been doing over the course of this series is just been looking at what God says through his word about what does it mean to be successful in relationships? How do we win? You know, and, and well, let me just tell you, winning in relationships with God's way is different than the world's way. If you just want to look at what God says, you can almost look at almost all the time the opposite of what the world says. And so over the course of the series, we've been looking at things like conflict. How do you handle conflict? Uh, appropriate boundaries in relationships. Last week, we looked at the power of our words and what God says about how it helps us to win in relationships. And if you missed any of those, you can go to our website, go to our app, and you can catch up uh, with us uh, today. Now, as we close this series, uh, today what I want to talk about uh, is commitment. And it's not what you think, okay? I'm going to ask you to take the journey with me. Because at the end of the day, you know this. You become what you're committed to. You commit yourself to eating a certain way, it leads you down a certain path. If you commit yourself uh, to, to reading the Bible, getting up in the mornings and, and doing that, it's going to lead you down a, a certain path. Um, you, you, you get up every day and you get up late and you go to late, <laughs> late to work every day, it leads you down a certain path. Amen? All right? Um, <clears throat> so you become what you're committed to. And I wonder if some of the reasons why we don't have many close relationships, okay, or maybe we've had a lot of failed relationships, is this issue of this word commitment. Now, it's, it's different than what you're thinking, okay? But to help give you a picture of God's design for relationships, um, I just want to tell you a quick story from God's word. And it's the story in the book of Ruth. Uh, in the book of Ruth, we see Naomi and her two daughter-in-laws, Orpah and Ruth. Um, their husbands died. And so now these three ladies are on their own. And she's like, you need to go back to your family of origin because, so that you'll be okay. You're like, Let's watch, watch this. In the book of Ruth, it's in your notes. It says, then Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, go back, each of you, to your mother's home. May the Lord show you kindness as you have shown kindness to your dead husbands and to me. And she says, may the Lord grant that each of you will find rest in the home of another husband. Then she kissed them goodbye and they wept aloud. Now watch what they said to her. 
we will go back with you and your people. They're like, "Uh uh-uh, we we ain't going nowhere. We're we're, we're staying with you. Now, in the the verses afterwards, uh, she, she convinces at least Orpah to go back. But watch Ruth's, as she's fighting with, <laughs> she's fighting uh, with Naomi. Watch what, she, what Na- or Ruth says. But Ruth replied, don't urge me to leave you or turn back from you. Because where you go, I will go. And where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people and your God, my God. Watch this. Where you die, I will die and there I will be buried. May the Lord deal with me, be it ever so severely, if even death separates you and me. I think she's pretty serious here. And when Naomi realized that Ruth was determined to go with her, she stopped urging her. Man, that's a relationship right there. Like, why would Ruth do that? Like, when she, you're talking about her well-being. Back in their culture, I mean, it, it really helped to have a husband. It really helped. Like, like you, she's going against cultural norms. Like, you need to go home back to your family of origin so they can take care of you, and then they, they can help you find another husband so that you can be taken care of. But she's like, forget that. I'm staying with you. I'm giving up that future because my future is with you. Now, here's the thing. They're not even blood. They're not even blood. So why would you do that? Here it is. Because spirit is thicker than blood. There was such a bond and a commitment to one another that Ruth couldn't bear to break the relationships. And this is, I'm not even talking about marriage here. I'm talking about friendship. And we don't even we don't see this in our world at all. In our culture. My question is for you is do you have that? Do you have those type of relationships? I'm with you to the end of the line. For you Marvel fans out there. Do you have that? You can. You can have those relationships that are even tighter than blood. So the question is, how do we get that? That's what I want to talk to you about today. And here's, if I could just put it down as simple as possible, here it is. If you want to have those kinds of relationships, you treat people the way that Christ has treated you, and you'll have those. That in Scripture, what we see is that Christ has made several, if you want to call this, commitments towards us. The way that he has chosen to commit to treat us. And he asks us to do the same thing. And if you will do those things, you will have great relationships. Everybody with me? Let me give you an example. John chapter 13. Watch what it says here. It says, a new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. Because the way I have treated you, I want you to do that. And by this, everyone will know that you're my disciples if you love one another. That Jesus wants us to win in relationships. I want you to win. I want you to have deep relationships. But you won't have them. You won't have what Ruth had in friendship unless you commit to do certain things. There are certain commitments that you have to make in relationships that I'm going to be honest with you is countercultural. But they're the very things that Jesus has done for you. And if you'll do them, you'll win in relationships. Everybody with me? Okay, here they are. I want to give you some of these are this is not exhaustive, but here it is. Here's the first one. If you'll make this commitment to the, to the people around you, I commit to prioritize you. Jesus prioritized you. Well, let's, let's look at this. 1 John 3, 16. We know John 3, 16. What about 1 John? This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. 
Jesus prioritized us. He prioritized you. So we should do that for others. Like, Jesus made you important. (laughs) And we need to do that for others. We need to prioritize other people. Now, there is a reason why this doesn't happen in our relationships. And I just, with each one of these, I just kind of want to give you a missing ingredient. Like, this is why we maybe don't experience these things. And here it is. It's time. It's time. We just don't prioritize relationships. We don't spend time. Relationships need time. We make time for what's important to us. You know that. I don't have to tell you that. And let's just be honest. If we're honest, we don't make time for other people. We're, what, too busy. And no wonder we don't have tight relationships. That our calendars shout to the world that relationships really aren't as important to us if we're really honest. Because I got to do this and 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 this. But what we find with scripture is this. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 25. The writer says, hey, we're not to be giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing. But we're to encourage one another. And all the more as we see the day approaching. That's the day when Jesus comes back. If relationships are important to us, we have to make the time for it. I know this isn't rocket science. But somebody needs to say it. Let me give you an example. We have what we call small groups here where you can get and connect with other people in the life of the church and maybe even do some things that you normally do anyway and just do it for fun and just do it with the people around you. And I can admit this, and I know some of you will have this as well, that there are some evenings or whenever your, your group meets, you're like, man, I don't know if I can do this. I've been so busy. I just like to stay home tonight. Anybody? Now, it's a little bit difficult if you're the one hosting it. (laughs) But can I just tell you time and time again, I've heard people say, you know what, that's how I felt. But I'm so glad I went. Because it filled my tank. And now I have relationships and it's brought so much encouragement We have to prioritize it in our life. If you want great relationships and you want great friendships, it has to be important to you. You have to put time in your schedule. Here's the second one. Here's the second commitment. I commit to pursue you. Now, this is a little different. Did you know that Jesus has always been pursuing you? He's still pursuing you. That's how he's treating us. He still is. I love this verse, Revelation 3, verse 20. Watch this. Look, I stand at the door and knock. If you hear my voice and open the door, I'll come in. I love this new NLT version. And we will share a meal together as what? Friends. He's coming after you. He wants to have a relationship with you. He has always been. He's always knocking. It's important to him that it's important enough that he is going out of his way to pursue you. He's not waiting for you. He's coming after you. And I wonder if we do that in our relationships. But here's what I see that's missing in our culture and even in our church world. Okay? Here it is. Here's the missing ingredient. It's just simple. It's effort. It's effort. Um, I hear this a lot. Nobody talks to me. Nobody wants to be with me. Can I just tell you, people aren't just going to flock to you out of the sky. It doesn't happen that way. We're waiting for everyone else. And, and all, I, I meet with people constantly, and they're telling me, I don't really have anybody, and nobody's reaching out to me, and nobody is talking to me. And it's like, if I could just get you all in the same room together. That's why we do small groups, to get you all in the room together. But listen, sometimes we have to go out of our way. We have to make the effort. Not only does it take time, but it means getting out of our comfort zone to make the effort to put ourselves out there. And I wonder, 
that if part of the reason why we don't have those tight relationships, we don't have what Ruth has where I'm all in to the end of the line. We don't have those because not only time, but the effort to pursue it, that we're going after it. Like you have to demonstrate its importance. I want you to show you this verse. I didn't really see this until I went deeper with this verse this week. 1 Peter 4, 8 says, above all, above all, that, that's, 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 it kind of gets your attention. Above all, everything. Peter says, love each other deeply because love covers over a multitude of sin. Now, here's the interesting thing about this verse. When it says love each other deeply, you're kind of thinking, okay, what does that have to do with what you're talking about? Well, when you go deeper into the Greek, the, the original language of this, that word deeply, it means fervently. It's like with all that you are. It, it has this connotation that it stretches you, takes you out of your comfort zone. That above all, we're to love each other with a lot of effort. Everybody with me? It takes effort. Here's the third commitment. I commit to share myself with you. We have to make a commitment to share ourselves with someone. I'm going to share with you what's inside of me. I'm going to let you in. Now, that is difficult for some of us. But I want you to think about your relationship with Christ. I want you to think about that. Watch what Paul says about his relationship with Christ. Watch what he says here. But he said to me, this is Paul saying about Jesus. So Jesus is saying to him, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Now watch Paul's response. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. Like, I'm okay with my weaknesses. I'm okay with letting God know about it. I'm okay with talking to him about it. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in my weaknesses and insults and hardships and persecutions and difficulty. For when I am weak, then I am strong. That in other words, Paul is saying, I don't have to be shy about my weaknesses. Because I find strength when I show my weakness to Christ. Everybody with me? It's kind of similar with people, too. If you really think about it. Strength is found... <laughs> Not by putting on some facade. How are you? I'm good. Wife's good. Kids are good. It's good. It's good. You're lying. But we just got to put this facade out there. But we're to be honest about our lives. We're to be honest about our weaknesses with other people. If you want those deep friendships. And here's the missing ingredient. And here it is. This is vulnerability. You got to be vulnerable with people. If you want deep relationships, you have to be vulnerable. You have to put yourself out there. Now, I get it. Many of us, maybe we've been hurt and we just don't want to do that. Then, you're, then all of your relationships, they will be surface moving forward. You have to go deeper. And I know this is countercultural. I'm going to give you this verse, and I feel bad. I know I might feel bad. I, I feel like, man, I, I use this verse like nauseam. So if you've been here at the Heights very long, you know I use this verse every six weeks. Here it is. Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Like James is saying, you have to let people in including the parts that maybe you're a little embarrassed about, that you don't want people to know. The ones that make you feel a little weak or look weak. But that's what brings people together. Not that I've got it all together. Stop it. You don't. None of us do. we got to be vulnerable. Number four, I commit to sacrifice for you. We have to make that commitment. 
Now, of course, we know that Jesus did that for us, right? Romans 5, 8. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this, that while we were still sinners, I love that, while we were still sinners, not when we got our act together, while we were still doing it, while we're still doing it, Christ died for us. That I love the fact that we don't have to get cleaned up first and then come to God. Anybody thankful for that? But here's the thing, Christ sacrificed for the relationship. Like this goes beyond effort. This is, this is beyond this. This is where it costs you something. This goes beyond what's in it for me. And I wonder how many of us we sacrifice for relationships. Really sacrifice. And here's the missing ingredient. It's just giving. Giving of ourselves. Our time, talents, treasures. All those things for people. Uh, <clears throat> several weeks back, I had a college friend. Um, we keep up with one another. We're not as tight as we used to be, but uh, his mother died. It was hard. And I just, it was a busy season in my life, and I had a lot going on here at the church and my family's life. And, and I, the funeral was a few hours away, and I had to travel for it. And I was thinking, man... I don't know if I got time for this. And my wife, I married over my head. She's like, you need to go. You need to go. And listen, I am so glad that I did. See, I sacrificed. It was a sacrifice. Because, man, it made my schedule all wonky the rest of the week. It, was, it made it crazy. But what it did is it rekindled that relationship and let him know that I cared, that I was willing to go out of my way to sacrifice for him. And it just did something to our relationship. It made our relationship even stronger. There's nothing like the ministry of presence when you're going through a hard time, when you sacrifice for somebody else. Everybody with me? Do we sacrifice for relationships? Get inconvenienced. Hebrews 13, 16 says... And do not forget to do good and to share with others. Sacrifice, brothers. For such sacrifices, God is what? He's pleased. That's what we're supposed to do. Great friendships, they're costly. It will cost you something. But they're so worth it. They're worth it. Number five. We're nearing, we're getting there. Here's a commitment. I commit to look out for you. I commit to look out for you. Doesn't Jesus look out for us? Watch and what the Bible says here in Psalm 121, verse 7. It says, the Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. I love that. The Lord keeps tabs on us. Like, he's looking out for us. And can I just tell you, great friends look out for us. Great friends look out for each other. We look out for them, right? That sometimes we need to protect them from themselves. We need somebody to protect us from ourselves. Now, again, this is countercultural. And when I say this, the missing ingredient that I think many of us, we don't do, you're going to disagree with me. You're going to be like, Pastor, mm, I don't know about that. So I'm just going to tell you, here it is. It's the missing ingredient. Consistent, not praying, prying. It's in prying. Shouldn't be praying. Prying. You understand what I mean by prying? P R Y I N G. I'm getting in your world. I'm, I, I'm nitpicking. I'm getting in the middle of all that. And some of you, again, are like, I don't know about that, Pastor. I, I don't know if I can, if I can, if I can do that. Um, you can't look out for somebody if you don't know what's going on in their lives. Hey, how's it going? You doing all right? Good, good, good. No, really. I'm just checking in. Hey, how's it going with your job? Hey, how's it going uh, with your kiddo that they're having a hard time you were telling me about? Hey, how's it going with this bitterness towards your husband? 
Hey, how's it going with this? <laughs> You're like, well, pastor, isn't that meddling? Yep. <laughs> Great friends, meddle. Life isn't a do-it-yourself project. We need other people. We need people up in our business. And we need to get up in their business. And we've got to have this consistent prying into other people's lives and let them do that to us. Not only are we supposed to be vulnerable, but we're supposed to go be prying into theirs. You don't hear that very often, do you? Watch this, Proverbs 17, 17. A friend loves at all times. What's in all times? Every time. And a brother is born for a time of adversity. That, that when things are hard and, and we're with somebody in the middle of the hard, that's what brings relationships together. But you can't do that if you don't know what's going on. And in our culture, it's like, you just stay over there and I'm going to stay over here and none of your business. No wonder we're so broken and messed up. That Christ followers with all humility are to be into each other's lives. You know this in Proverbs 27, 17. As iron sharpens iron, so does one person sharpen another. We need it. We need to commit ourselves to be active in someone else's life. Everybody with me? Here's the last one. I commit to forgive you. To forgive you. This is hard. But you know Jesus forgave us, right? It says here in uh, Colossians, I believe it is 3, 13. Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive is what? The Lord forgives you. We have to commit ourselves to forgive people because that's what Jesus did for us. This is tough. Because the people who are closest to you are the ones who have the most ability to hurt you. And when they do, it is hard. But listen, I need everybody here to listen. Are you with me? The best relationships, the closest relationships are those that work through this, that work through the hurt and forgive one another. Those relationships are the tightest and they're the most secure. Why? Because if they made it through that, they know they're going to be okay. They're at peace with that person. They can let, let, let their hair down because they know that we're all human. And even in my most inhumane moment, that person forgave me. And I forgave them. And it brings, it, it brings people tight together. Many of you don't have close friends. Because when you get hurt, you bail. Or if it gets tough, you bail. Like the first reaction is to protect yourself and run. But that's not what healthy Christ followers do. Because, see, when we do that, your relationships are all surface. They're surface. Because I can't go deeper. I don't want to go deeper because I don't want to be offended. I don't want anyone else to be offended. i I, I got to protect myself. But you can never go deep. It's all a facade. You see, it's only when we allow our humanity to come out and their humanity and we forgive the humanity, work through it, that it brings people together and provides security because we are all human and we will all make mistakes in relationships. Amen? And so here's the missing ingredient. It's courage. It's courage. It takes courage to forgive. It takes courage to put yourself out there again. 
but you will never truly have committed life-giving relationships if you don't forgive. If you don't forgive. Jesus was asked this by Peter in Matthew 18. He says, Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Up to seven times? Like Peter's like, yeah, that's a lot. I should, that, should, that should cover it, right? Uh, Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but 77 times. And those of you who know numbers and the Bible and just that seven of completeness and, you know, just, he's just saying forever. You're, you should always forgive is really what he's saying. I get it, relationships are messy. And when we've been hurt, maybe we need to go back to what we talked about on conflict a few weeks ago. We've got to work through that. But we've got to forgive. Relationships are worth it. And you may be saying, Pastor, man, I don't know. This is hard. Yeah, I get it. You're right. You're right. But that's why we need Christ right in the middle of it. We need relationships where Christ is at the center of my life and I'm pursuing Christ and they are pursuing Christ. And when we come together and put Christ in the middle of it, we make these commitments to one another, we can make something great. Something great happens. And then when we do that, this is where you'll get that experience. This will happen in your life where you'll know that spirit is thicker than blood. I want to close with this verse. This is what you'll hear a lot of times at weddings, but this is really about friendship. It says this, two are better than one, Ecclesiastes here, because they have a good return for their labor. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up at sacrifice. But pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. Also, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. Now watch this. A cord of how many strands? Three. It's not quickly broken. That's when we put Christ right in the middle of it. My heart is been broken this week as far as just relationships and I've even experienced this in my own life where I can feel really alone and many of you feel alone and I think that some of us maybe we need to ask some honest questions about where we stand with these commitments because when we do and we put Christ in the middle of it Man, beautiful things happen. And I unapologetically ask you, maybe you're on the fringe here at the heights, you know, you've been coming and and it's kind of like you've been watching. Let's stop watching and start participating. Let's let's invest in relationships and friendships. Or maybe you have some close friends and you're just really struggling with them. Maybe we need to take an honest look. God, is there something in me, these commitments that I'm just struggling with? So here's what we want to do as we close this series. I want to give you an opportunity to sort through that. Let's just be honest about it. So I invite you right now, if you would, just to bow your heads with me. Let's pray together. Lord, we want relationships that's thicker than blood because we know that because of your presence and your spirit, your spirit is thicker than blood. So Lord, I I pray you forgive us when we've kind of adopted the culture's way of doing relationships. And so Lord, right now, I pray that you would bring healing Lord, that you would bring new relationships. But Lord, that you would do your work in our lives. 
If it's this kind of struck a chord with you today, I just invite you right now, just be quiet of where you're sitting. Just talk to God about it. Talk to God about your relationships, where you're at. Lord, I thank you that you hear our prayers. And Lord, today we commit ourselves to put you first in our relationships. Maybe you're here today and let's just be honest, maybe you've never put God first in your life. But can I just tell you, Jesus made some commitments to you that we talked about. He loves you so much. He wants a relationship with you, not a religion. He wants to know you, you know him, and just to have that. But there's something that's happened. It's called sin that separates that. And that sin has to be paid for. The mistakes that we made has to be paid for. But Jesus did that through the, his death on the cross. He paved the way so that you could have a relationship with him. He sacrificed for you. And you can have that relationship with him by receiving his forgiveness, by making him the Lord of your life. And you can do that right now by making this commitment. Maybe say a prayer like this, Lord, thank you for dying on the cross for me. That while I was still a sinner, you died for me. So Lord, forgive me of my mistakes and my sin. And the best that I know how, I give you my life. Take control, be my Lord, be my master. Then Lord, also be my friend. And I thank you for that. Thank you for pursuing me. And now the best that I know how, I follow you. I'm gonna represent you and to be the friend that you have been a friend to me. Lord, I pray for each person. I pray that prayer. I pray for each person in this room. And Lord, that you would bring them healthy relationships. Help them, oh Lord. We pray this in Jesus' name. Everybody said together. Amen, amen. Hey guys, thank you so much for being here today. Before we go, we're just gonna spend some time just letting this sit. <laughs> and so if, if you would like, you can take communion there in the back. And if, there's, if you wanna come up and pray, there's some candles up front. You can pray for a friend that God's put on your heart that you're praying for this particular relationship. If you need prayer, we'll have some prayer partners in the back. Uh, but we would love to pray for you and to walk beside you uh, in your journey. If you would, let's stand together and we're going to sing this song together. Just as we talked about these principles of committing, we're going to commit ourselves to the Lord this morning. Sing this out, help my heart.
let's make this our prayer this morning. I will dwell in your presence. I will walk in your goodness. Every good gift, oh, every good gift is from you. Do you believe that this morning? I will dwell in your presence. I will walk in your goodness. Every good gift, every good gift. From you, I will dwell in your presence. I will walk in your goodness. Every good gift, every good gift is from you. Oh, yes, it is. Yes, it is. so glad that we have a God that so faithfully commits to us, who pursues us, who shows us his love, who forgives us. Let's do that in our relationships this week. Let's commit to one another, whether that's in our marriages, whether that's in our friendships, in relationships with coworkers. Let's commit to commit this week. As we wrap up our service this morning, we're going to end with the time of offering. And if you're prepared for that, there'll be a couple buckets on your way out this morning. Um, there's also a few ways that you can give on the, on the screen behind us. I just want to pray for us as we dismiss this morning. So let's pray together. Lord, thank you for being a committal God, the God that commits to us. Lord, would you show us the importance of commitment? and how we can do that in our relationships. Lord, as we take these principles that Pastor Matt um, taught us this morning, Lord, help us to put these into practice this week. Lord, we pray over this offering. I ask that you would use it for your kingdom to grow your name, to make your name known here in Polk County and in Missouri and in, in, the, in this nation and across the world, Lord. We give it to you and offer it to you this morning, Lord. Pray this in your name. Amen. Hope you guys have a great week, and we see you next Sunday.